mention how Jesus is the new Adam. And what does that mean? Part of being the new Adam is that he removes the original sin that the old Adam brought into us, right? And uh, uh, also he removes its punishment of death. And we'll get to the, uh, a little bit on that uh, in a minute. Um, so that's, that's key to understand because death is the punishment that Adam passed on to us. You know, it's uh, similar to uh, somebody who was once a king and he got removed from office. There are a lot of those in, in Europe. A lot of countries used to have kings or counts or dukes and they got removed from office. And their kids didn't do anything wrong, but they still can't go back and be the duke or the king. They just, it's, it's a lack that they have. So also well, we, we uh, suffer that lack of eternal life. We have to deal with death. Well, Christ comes to restore us. And he also will bring forgiveness for original sin and any other sins that each one of us commits. That's uh, what he is doing. So let's take a look at some of these places in Scripture where we see that. First, let's look at Romans chapter 5, where we see um, that Christ is the new Adam that removes the sin of the old Adam. In Romans chapter 5, verse 15, St. Paul wrote, The free gift, that is the free gift of grace, is not like the trespass, that is the sin of Adam. For if many died through one man's trespass, all the descendants of Adam had to die, much more have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. So Adam's sin led to everybody's death, but greater than that will be the, is the grace that Jesus Christ has won for us. That's why it says in verse 16, the free gift is not like the effect of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass, just one sin of disobedience, eating from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Oh, just for that, um, one sin uh, bringing condemnation However, the free gift that comes from Christ after many trespasses brings justification. He makes us right with God, justifies us before God. If because of one man's trespass, as Adam's sin, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Now, it's not just winning a grace. It is winning a grace in Jesus Christ. Remember, we said he's the one mediator. Only one there is. So you have to have that grace in Christ. And it's part of your relationship with Christ. It's not merely some juridical issue. It's rather part of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Then verse 18, then as the one man's trespass led to condemnation for all men, so the one man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and life for all men. There is no limit to the power of the righteousness and the power of eternal life that Jesus Christ can give to everyone who comes to him. This is very key. For as by one man's disobedient, many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. We get made righteous through Christ being obedient to the Father, obedient to the point of death, as St. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 and following. And law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more so that the grace of God was more powerful than the sin 
so that as sin reigned in death, grace might also reign through righteousness to eternal life. And that in this sense, the eternal life that Jesus Christ won for us by dying on the cross and by rising from the dead, that eternal life is going to be stronger than death. Death is going to uh, last for a short time. This will be for all eternity.